In this episode of the Swing Report, we're looking at the Garmin Approach R10 portable launch monitor. Gonna be a great option for golfers to bring with them anywhere, garage, uh, driving range, or out on the golf course. Uh, golfers, subscribe to this video if you like this content. Also, leave us a comment and tell us what you think of the Garmin Approach R10. And of course, as always, skip to the final chapter for our final take on the Garmin Approach R10. Hey golfers, I'm Drew Maholder, Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing. We're outside on the driving range um, with the Garmin Approach R10. This thing is, I mean, there is a lot of capabilities with this thing for a relatively cheap price point for something that has as much technology packed in there as this thing. So the Garmin Approach R10, it's a portable little launch monitor. This little device can track all kinds of things. And we're, I'm curious to see how this thing actually tests out because you know we're working with launch monitors very often. Um, and th if this thing says, you know, does what it says it can, it's going to be impressive. Yeah, that price point at five ninety nine, the fact that it picks up club path, mm -hmm. face angle, attack angle, right for me, thinking. I mean, you compare that to other launch monitors. You know, not even like your your lower end launch monitors don't even pick up those, those numbers. Right. So, and they're priced higher than five ninety nine. Mm -hmm. So. It's gonna be interesting to see how they number how the numbers compare. Yeah, so I mean this thing is it's not very big. It's easy to move around, right? It's three and a half by two and a half by one inch. So I mean it's there's not a ton of surface area to work with here, but it's it's nice that you can move around very easily. It's also magnetic with this tripod back here, so you can easily attach it, set it up, easy to go. Um, up to 10 hours of battery life too. So I mean you're working with a ton of time. You can spend literally the entire day on the range with this thing and learn a ton about your game. And as you mentioned, I want to get into every single metric that this thing will capture with your swing. So club head speed, face angle, path angle, attack, angle of attack, ball speed, launch angle, launch direction, spin axis, spin rate, apex height, smash factor, carry distance, total distance, and deviation distance. So what else more do you really I mean, need, that's, right? <laughs> that's, I mean, as a fitter, that's probably yeah. got to be really intriguing to you and also as a teacher. Yeah, I'm going to be excited to see, you know, those numbers and see how they compare to compare to my normal numbers. And I think we'll probably do a future test where we'll compare it, say, to TrackMan mm -hmm. and see how those numbers stack up. Yeah, that'd be a really interesting one, too, I think a lot of golfers would like. And then one thing I do want to touch on, too, is the accuracy. So you go onto um, the Garmin website, and you can look at the accuracy at all these metrics. So club head speed accuracy, for example, is within three miles an hour of accuracy. Ball speed is within one mile an hour. Launch angle within one degree. Launch direction within one degree, and then the carry distance is within five yards. So, um, you know, there's a, obviously some little bit of wiggle room there, but that's still, a, I mean, you're getting all kinds of information about your game. And then, not to mention the other features that come with it, you can play rounds of golf on 42,000 golf courses that are downloaded through the Garmin Golf mobile app. So, you can hook it up through Bluetooth on your mobile app, and uh, you can have it actually attached right here with this um, handy little attach device here. Hook it up to your phone and have it on your golf bag and you can play golf while you're on the driving range or in your garage, wherever you might be swinging a golf club. And this thing, if you set it up with the right camera angle, you can capture your own video of your swing with each uh, you know, shot that the device picks up. So all kinds of stuff that you can do with this thing. Um, and again, at $599, that's pretty good. It's, it's quite the package. And I believe there is a subscription that comes mm -hmm. with, with some of those things. So I think it's $10 a month or $99 a year. Um, but that even still value of being able to play those 42,000 courses. I believe it also can connect to E6 golf simulator mm -hmm. as well. So you can get even better high definition visuals at, at home when you're playing uh, your simulator, playing all those golf courses. 42,000 golf courses, that is a lot. I think you can pretty much pick up whatever golf course you want and go play. Yeah, I mean, essentially, I think it's just the, the Garmin database for all their other GPS devices. They have that attached to this launch monitor so you can you know again go on the range and you can play any golf course there and uh, learn a ton about your game so uh, that's a ton of capabilities here but let's test it out a little bit Thomas huh we've got it right here we're on the driving range uh, we'll hit a few different clubs and we'll see what the numbers say yeah let's test wedge let's test seven iron and test driver and see how close they are to my normal numbers that's a good shot Yep. So you're hitting pitching wedge, Thomas. Um, for the viewers, give us an in indication of maybe what you'd expect, you know, distance-wise um, out of your pitching wedge, and then we'll kind of look at these numbers here too. My normal carry with pitching wedge, with full pitching wedge, is 
right over about 140 to 145. Okay. Is what my normal carry or full swing pitching wedge would be. Okay. Yeah, because so that last one was 145 carry as well. 145 so. carry. It's pretty good. That one got a little thin and a little to the right. Yep. Maybe just a couple yards shorter. Yeah. Carry 142 that time. Total 145 on that one. Got it. A little more spin with catching a little thin. Yeah. 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 So you had you went up to just that. Well, the first one, the shot that was 6,500. Now it's 7,900 for that one. Okay. So it's a little right again. It sounded like hit that one better though. Yep. That was pretty solid. Yeah. Carry 144 that time for a total of 149. That's pretty impressive. That's four shots with mm -hmm. between 142 and like 146, right? With regards to carry distance? Yeah, so you've got your, you got, three, you got the shots 145, 142, 144 carry. Total 151, 145, 149. Um, so that's, you know, and then, yeah, I mean, you, you got, it's pretty consistent, right? That's what you're, right. that's what you're looking for there. Yeah, I, for a price at 599, my, my concern would have been, all of a sudden, well, you get one that maybe go 130, 150. Right. But you can see here the consistency is pretty good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, what about 7 iron now? This so, 7 iron. So my carry there is around about 180. Okay, so I will change that to a 7 iron here. All right, how was that one, you think? Um, it didn't feel like it was the perfect contact, but I don't think it was too far away from my numbers. So I got you at carry of 173, total of 180. Okay. For that one. One was just a little heavy as well. So, so the spin on your last one was 6,700 on okay. that first shot. Curious to see the spin now. If you hit this one a little bit heavy, you'd think it would go down a little bit. Go down maybe just a little bit, yeah. Interesting. It's actually 6,700 again. Interesting. Pretty but similar I mean, number. Yeah, 174 carry 181 total that time. Okay. So virtually the same distance. Let's see if I can actually hit one solid here. There we go. That one looked really good. That'd be close to about 180. You're thinking 180 carry? It won't be far off. 181, how about that? Wow, that's pretty good. <laughs> 186 total on that one. That's really accurate, actually. Yeah. I'm, I'm really surprised. Yeah, launch angle there, 18.1 for that one. 68, 77 spin there. So it has, I mean, it's cool to bring up all your club path information there, too. That's, that's interesting. But what's, yeah. what's that telling us? Your club path, it's got you 7.3 to the right. It's got you, cl your club face open 1.9. Okay. So, I mean. My and, path and usually is about three to four degrees into out. Yeah. I haven't looked at my club path in a while, so it could easily be a little bit more in, into out than Yeah, in, so in you, the past. you definitely have that draw working. And I, I think there's something to be said too about maybe not having a specific target in terms of alignment. You're kind of, a little way you're kind of guessing out there. But Right. I was um, kind of lining up for the middle of the, the Garmin here, the middle of the bowl to try and line myself up straight. Yeah. But uh, you're right. There's, probably, there's no way to perfectly kind of line that, that I know of would perfectly line it up straight. There. Yeah. Well, and if, if people have been watching our videos, they know how, you know, <laughs> You have this knack for when you hit a shot, you're like, oh, I know how you can guess within two to three yards how far that's going. Yep. And each of these, you've been able to guess, you know, the, the Garmin distance has matched up with your guess. So right. something to be said, I think, about the accuracy here, because I know at least when we're using TrackMan, you, you're able to do the same thing. So Yeah, the last one I hit really good is the only one that I feel like I hit solid, but it was, I was like, it's got to be around 180, and it was mm -hmm. what, 181. Yes. So. Where? Okay, now driver could be okay. The that'll next be interesting. Part here. That'll be a little tougher to kind of gauge a little bit, I think. Yeah, I'm I'm curious now if we can see the like, the club speed numbers and see what that's picking mm -hmm. up, and and then also uh, distance will be interesting as well. As well. That's it. Well, just a little right over his aim, but how do you how do you feel about that one? First driver swing of the day, so. First driver swing of the day. Uh, now you got me guessing here what my club speed would be, but <laughs> maybe around about 110? 111. 111. 111. All right. 166 ball speed. It's got some extra spin for you, 3,100 spin. Yeah. So The ball curved of, a little to the right. Yeah, so a cur carry of 280, total 295 there. So. it's good. That one was hit well. 
Oh yeah. I should have a little less spin on it. Oh, that flew over the fence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess we are a little closer up here. <laughs> How's that one? That was pretty good. So I've got you carrying that one 278 yards. Spin at 3200. Club speed was 112, ball speed 164. That was hit well. Spin yeah. should be a little lower on that one. So carry on that one is 285, total 299. Now, one thing I'm noticing here, just in comparison to um, TrackMan, it seems like there's less rollout provided right. here. Um, or the, I know the standard TrackMan rollout is pretty far for a driver usually. Yeah, kind I of, feel like that. The standard is more firm conditions where it seems like here there's not they're not providing as much rollout. And also that spin was a little bit, it was under 3,000 there at 2,900. But It seems like the spin's a little high. Yeah. I definitely feel, I mean, when I do testing, I'm low 2,000s with, with my spin. Yeah. And we're kind of the high 2,000s, it seems like mm -hmm. it's picking up here. Interesting. Um, that one, that last one, I hit really, really well. Mm -hmm. that yeah. last, that ball shot speed was... one sixty seven was on, on that one, a little yep. bit high. So that's the highest ball others, speed, so higher highest ball speed of the day yep. there. So and you felt like that was the best shot you hit. So that we sure have that. Uh, you know, we feel is accurate there. Um, and then I can I can bring up here this uh, some session stats here, and you can see the dispersion on the map here a little bit. If I bring it up here, so I mean you've got you can kind of see on the map here, Thomas. I can show you the the map there makes you got three on the right and got kind of one left there. Um, but that's cool. You can bring that up and see your dispersion, dispersion a little bit pattern. too, which I know is a big part of the fitting process of second swing and in, in the fitting bays. But also if someone's on the driving range, it's nice to have a dispersion to look at there too. Right. And I think it's it's falling within the tolerances that Garmin were talking about. Yeah. For, for, the, for the most part, the tolerances are pretty, pretty close. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, they'll go through a couple more firmware updates and I think they'll probably yeah, really yeah. get stuff kind of dialed, dialed in there too, but still 599 for a device well, that's picking up everything like this that we, that we need. It's, uh, it's still very impressive. Yeah. 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 And I, I mean, I, Garmin's not, you know, claiming that this is going to be accurate to the 10th of a yard. Um, right. But you know, it's, it's very nice. And again, with the whole video capturing feature as well, you can see your swing, you can see, you know, maybe there's shots that you can, you know, mark as good on here. And you can look at the swing on video and you can see, okay, maybe I did this differently than on my bad swing. So uh, there's a ton that you can learn from your game with this thing. And uh, I, during, the, during the testing, I think, yeah, you know, it's absolutely worth that price point of $599. Right. And you can bring it anywhere. It's small. Mm -hmm. You can bring it outside. You can have it inside in your garage. It's, uh, it's, it's a pretty impressive device for that price. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, Thomas, we've done our testing. Garmin Approach R10, I think we're pretty impressed overall. Uh, it's, a, it's a small, easy to move around device. Um, it does a ton of things for you. We didn't even show the full capabilities here today with you know being able to play golf courses and things like that. But um, it's, a, it's, it's a launch monitor that's this big, uh, captures right. all the data that you're really looking for. And it's easy to set up, it's easy to use. I mean, I'm really impressed with it. Yeah, I mean, I just picked this up and it's, what is this? Maybe five inches <laughs> wide by yeah, four inches if high. That. It, if that, it's it's a it's a pretty small device, and there's a lot of info pack package into this little thing. Mm -hmm. So I think yeah, it's it's portable. It's it gives you know your recreational golfers that everything that you need. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not saying that it's going to be perfectly you know every single number is going to be perfectly accurate. But uh, you know, right reliability is pretty good. We don't mm -hmm. set with my seven iron, especially the seven yeah. iron numbers. I said it was going to carry one. Yeah, you were. I mean, that was, was dialed in. It was at mm -hmm. 181. Yeah. So that was pretty impressive. And we still got future testing to do as well. So yeah. I'm really excited to test this versus other launch models. Yeah, I think a lot of golfers will be very interested in something like this for that price point where you see, you know, you, you see launch monitors and you th see the price points on them and then you're like, well, thousands and thousands of dollars. This is only $599. You can bring it in your garage. You set up a, a hitting area in your house. You can bring it on the driving range with you. And again, all the information that you get from that thing, it's its truly remarkable. So uh, kudos to, Car to Garmin for building a device like that for that price point. Um, I think this is going to be a huge hit here, especially coming into the winter months of 2021, where uh, you know a lot of golfers will be inside or forced to be inside. Something like this will be able to allow them to play golf, learn more about their swing. Uh, and I think, once again, uh, secondswing.com, of course, place to go um, if you're interested in one of these, because I think they're going to be very, very popular. 
Yeah, and I think the, the final thing to think about here with regards to reliability, even like the, the bigger simulators, they have occasionally have the occasional shot where oh, it doesn't yeah. pick out the number perfectly. Yeah. Um, so I mean, keep we've experienced mind. it in testing we've experienced in it our in own testing. videos. Yep. Um, we saw that once here with that club speed number. Yeah. Club speed was a little bit lower, but that does happen occasionally. But value wise, and oh, I, I, I would say for, you know, I'm thinking about getting one myself, literally, yeah. so I can just bring it outside when I, to, to practice with, to teach with. Yeah. And even just kind of use it outside in the summertime, I think is a great option. And then for those golfers that, you know, are building a, a simulator inside or wanted to play golf inside, it's definitely a great option. Mm -hmm. You can link it up to E6 and have really good quality. Yeah. Um, and I don't know the capabilities yet because we haven't tested it inside using the, the range format or the golf course format. But my understanding is you can link it to a different... Uh, Basically, a different software system. Yeah. And like E6, and you can play the golf course you want to play yeah. and have excellent graphics. Absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, golfers, you can visit secondsuite.com for more information on the Garmin Approach R10. Um, they are going to be going very fast uh, and they're going to be very popular here. So, uh, in terms of checking in on the inventory that we have, I would call 612. 216 4152. Talk with our team and um, ask more questions about this too. We'll be happy to help. But uh, again, this is going to be a very good option and I'm excited that we were able to test it out today. So, Thomas, thanks for joining today. Um, a lot of great stuff with the Garmin Approach R10. Not a problem. <laughs>